Did you see the video Camerol posted of all the hidden places on the uh, javelin? Yeah. I looked at that earlier today. Where are you right now? I'm next to you. Oh, no, not you. It says it's here. Again. I see closed and I see 11 minutes. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I see two different things. There's two javelins here and it doesn't know which one it wants to be. <laughs> It's like Twix left and Twix right. Okay, I want to go on the the A two now. Is the A two the the same above as the M two? I'm gonna check the coffee vendor. Every one of these, I try to check the vendors because they put oh. a lot of work into these. And nope, she's not working. See, they're all standing on the edge of this one now. I kicked them off the other day. False advertising. You can't fit three tanks on here. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, only two. I mean, uh, no, officially. No, not even two. One. Two officially, I thought. I thought no, if you only... turn the turrets the right way. No, it's only here. No, I mean on this one. Oh, on the, oh, on the A2. We're on, yeah. on the A2. Yeah, because the other one's well, officially, it's two, and really you can squeeze more in, but good luck. You can put two on here and rotate them around. and But see, this middle area is technically not a cargo grid right here. This is where yeah. I put the um, Invictus paint on my C2, and then I have my Invictus Cyclone that I parked here. That's and I was cool. doing I was doing delivery missions once they got fixed last patch in 3.17.0. Oh. Um, I put the boxes on, I'd park far away and then drive over. And the neat thing about the Cyclone is you can reach up and you know hit buttons and stuff, so you don't have to get out of your vehicle. So it was. And then, get this, I, I decided to test the Argo Cargo to run <laughs> missions. So I'd land this, like, you know, 100 meters away from wherever I was going, then come down, open this, and fly out in the Argo Cargo and land and grab my boxes and fly back in. Fair it enough. It's kind of cool. It's yeah. fun. I, I mean, but Invictus is like, the Jump Week situation is like, the greatest thing ever like there's a person in a hospital gown over there renting a nova tank like, yeah you don't see that that often now and these they they were working on the 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 cluster bombs right i saw that on the map where i assume that these are didn't... yeah but these are the moabs there's four still it looks like they're sticking with that cylindrical four dropper so two and two yeah on here but i mean You'll be able to replace it with the uh, 30 and 30 on each side of the... So you have 60 cluster bombs to drop instead. Mm -hmm. Your traditional sized elevator, um, which I assume this is the size of the elevator now for the Retaliator, since they did the switch. You yeah, and... One I'm... elevator instead of two, and you got the docking port, which... I assume they're gonna do to a lot of ships, try to get so, them to vertical walk or horizontal walk off. Right. So, they don't. They don't want to deal with the climbing ladders, I suppose. Let's think objectively here. So on this ship, if we move transition a little bit here, like this ship okay. is seven hundred and fifty USD. Yeah, I, this one is correct. I I don't think the bombs are worth that. Now the gun turrets over there, if you can fill every one of these damn turrets, that's different. Yeah, but it but it's a package deal. Remember, you're paying for all of it, and you're I, paying for the capacity. I really you're wish... jumping from five twenty to seven fifty, right? Isn't this five? Yes, or the five twenty for the M two. Yeah. Okay, so you're getting this the same heavy armor. You have the same three turrets that the M two has, and then you you're adding these right four turrets here. Mm -hmm. Can you? Uh, go in these and actually uh hang on one sec i'm trying to get power on okay oh i can't oh, either. okay this the uh that me background music is tied to the uh sound effects of the whole game yeah exactly so these are m7a's okay what size is m7 is that size four I think you subtract three from the number to get the 
That sounds about right. And then you have, their, I think they're dual turrets each. And there's four of them in this room that are remote turrets. Yeah, these are, these are all the, the lower turrets. Remotes you know are nice they... because if, if, say, the ship gets boarded or if you need to get out quickly and go suit up and go do something else, mm -hmm. you're all leaving as a group. Whereas if you're in a man turret system where you're all over the dang ship... Like on a Carrick. Yes. You're not able to, like, respond to a threat or go do something together as a group, whatever that I, is. I fully agree. And I, I like that, you know, you're all clumped here. What's this called, anyway? Turrets? Is that both sides? Yeah, just... So that's that's just pure turrets? Yeah. Look how well, wait a minute. this is. It's, oh, a it doesn't... it's a storage unit that locks inside of a storage unit container. You have to open it twice. <laughs> well, I, it's this is just for the... This is where it locks, though. This outside part, I think, yeah. is the locking part. Oh, that's funny. I can't open it. Oh, there it goes. Strictly so... authorized personnel only. It's not just authorized personnel. It's strictly authorized personnel. <laughs> I mean, like, but that's that is one thing that I can give the, all this Kirk's credit for. If you're boarding this ship most people are going to be coming through the bottom where like one of the doors was open and they they fought their way in or they they mm -hmm. hacked into one of those doors they're coming up this 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 uh ladder they're coming up yep. this elevator no and, not the elevator because you cut your power yeah well if you if you had time yeah if you didn't realize it was happening or the guy downstairs oh well yeah killed not or, that yeah you know so like it, it, at worst you have two two incoming spots and they're both next to each other so covering this isn't too bad. Um, and you've now got look, piles Red, of crew sitting on the terrace right there. you see right it? Now. The blinding light. Come here. It's well, not like it was for the last year. Yeah, that's a lot better than what it was. Because you could not stare at it at whatsoever. I agree. I'm sorry. I shouldn't interrupt you. My apologies. No, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, I I don't know what was going on with this blinding light. I don't. I still don't know. I guess it's proprietary Crusader tech or something. <laughs> it's it's where the it, it's what makes Crusader go faster. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you got the A2, the M2. There you got the 520 price point and the 750 price point. I don't know if the M2 is worth another 120 USD over. Well, sorry, 100 USD over. Sorry, no, 120 USD over the C2. But uh, which is, has less armor. 130. Has no chin turret. Isn't there. it 130? Uh, I thought it was. What did we, what did we say? Five, 520 to 750. That's 520 from 400. 520 from oh, 400. You the mean M2 to the C2. Oh, yeah. You, you, C2 to M2, you mean? Yeah, yeah. That, so, yeah. And no, I know. That's partly why I didn't go that route. Yeah, um, and then on top of that, they have a war, they have a, a war bond deal, this uh, event. Yeah. Where I it's saw. like thirty dollars less to get yeah. the uh, to get the upgrade, so yeah. the C two is actually right at this minute is a, like a hundred and fifty less than the M two. It's very hard to justify the M two, except for except for one thing, and it's the biggest thing. It's the heavy armor. If you need it, you need it. Yeah, everything, and every ship. Because I'm a big Terrapin fan. That's the one I had. But please don't get stuck and die back there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, their, their talk, every ship that has heavy armor, except the Gemini, because it was so long ago. Uh, but even then, it still had, what, a $40 bump, right? From the regular Starfare, mm -hmm. isn't the Gemini? like? But it also has other, like, bigger weapons and stuff, too. But... It, everything with heavy armor has a big jump and I think I, I just I think heavy armor when they implement heavy armor people are gonna go whoa that heavy armor is worth it drastic reduction or you might even have bounce effect from low end like maybe the M2 size 1 and 2 weapons don't even do anything to it for example that is possible so, so like somebody dedicated enough can chew through your shields but if your armor can't be it can't be taken out they can only do like right. very minor damage to specific modules right or x amount of kind of like uh 
you know, World of Warships trying to go up against, you know, deflection type numbers. You know, I don't know how serious they're going to get. Yep. Anyway, I know I'm not going to get this one, but... And I didn't want to go in the armory because that's where I got stuck last time. But I don't think it was the ship. It was... Okay, whoa. Okay. So there's four bunk beds because that's the number... Okay, crew quarters. Right, of Notice course. Notice this kitchen? Copy-paste kitchen? Oh, yeah. Well, like, what did I tell you? The, the A2 is the beefed up M2. If so, I had if I had access to them to this to the music, I would play the Bradley Wars song right here because this yeah. kitchen was like just a total cluster on spectrum. Yeah, I know, I remember. It, I do it like became, there's two bathrooms in here. You know, you mentioned yeah. before the um, the C two has limited restrooms because they put the kitchen there. Yeah. Whereas ignore these little switches. I mean, because they won't they'll be fixed, but they'll yeah. do something down the road. Yeah, that's pretty My good guess to have is, two restrooms. Yeah. The C2 has two restrooms, so there's basically one for each crew member, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it's a nice ship. I mean, it's You just poop so there expensive. and I poop here. We don't have to stuff <laughs> each other's poop. <laughs> well, that's a whole now, other... These, like, they, they these are the, the batteries, by the way. Uh, if you're not... Oh, again, yeah. See, and I always... It, it, people are like, you know, what's the battery for? And I... I think some ships will be able to run temporarily on battle, you know, battery power and shut down their engines to reduce signature or, you know, your traditional sci-fi, you know, where you're sitting parked out in the desert or wherever, you know, waiting for so-and-so to get back. So mm -hmm. you, you know, try to reduce your signature and, you know, shut down everything. Especially and I love the space the, whale. Like I love those. the shields are near the, whoa, this is a, Gorgon Defender Industries. I'm actually getting a tag like you would at the store. Are you getting that? Or is that just me? You know, when you point your cursor, are you... Yeah, I see it. I, but I see full block. Yeah, Gorgon Industries full block with no UEC uh, mount. But yes. Y yeah. That's different. I assume that it will be that way in I the like, future. I like all of them doing that. I think at these yeah. shows especially, there should be like... Honestly, there should be somebody walking around here, an NPC selling you the ship. But <laughs> I know. I agree. And so, then like, see, randomly this is what's Jax different. McCleary showing up and like breaking shit. That'd be funny. Yeah. And, and the M2, if you notice, has... I think it has eight escape pods too up here. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a lot. I mean, considering Which, this ship may even have stuff that can fly, or at least has habitation area in it, like I like it. Well, well, this <laughs> this this has a crew of eight, so the A two it makes sense. But to me, they sh they should have copied the C two to the M two. Yeah. Uh, uh. Or or the M two should have had um a third escape pod for the gunner somewhere. Yes. Um, whereas the C2 has like the armory up here and the armor suits, you know, because it doesn't have its own armory. So it has all the stuff right here, well, which. Yeah. Go ahead. The escape pods are going to have to be. Uh, the time to kill on ships is going to have to dramatically increase for these escape pods to mean anything. Oh, well, because... we know that that's what's coming. That's why the escape pods don't work now. Yeah, like I mean, it's gonna take. It's gonna have to take minutes to take this ship down, so people to get off those turrets oh. can wobble over here with no gravity and the thing going boo boo with the red well, lights blinking. Well, remember, and we're gonna yeah, because we're get, that's probably why we're getting uh, what do you call it? Um, the uh, hands over no gravity mechanic. You know where you can. That's why you got all these uh, these poles. Up above each door, so you can hold on to it when you're in zero g. That's that's why all the Good newer point. ships have have these now, is so you can grab, you know, when you you kind of push yourself and then grab it, then open the door with the manual release right here that says pull. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they're setting it up to be that, and I think this persistent thing, you know, to keep track of the states of everything. Um. So this is the rear turret. I know I've been in this before. Or not rear turret, the nose turret, excuse me. Mm-hmm. That's again, it's an M2 with extra stuff, but I don't, I mean, 
Yeah, the, where the C2, they rip the seat out, they rip the nose thing out, they strip the whole of armor, yeah. and that's basically, that's that's what a C2 is. But, it's a strip, strip down M2. I mean, it's really hard to not justify the C2 at warp bond CCU price of like 370. That's just, that's hard to I'm, beat. I'm telling you right now, I wish that the war bond was on the M2. Yeah, because it would help yeah. me in my in my progression to get to get to the liberator. <laughs> because yeah, I'm trying true. to go from a C2 right now, so there's hardly any war bonds that can help me between you know the two. So um, yeah, everything's below it. The libs at 575, the M2s at 520 USD. Yeah, uh, that's a that's quite a jump. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. and that, and that's fine because I, I, I got a, a, a break. I used a coupon and something else to get to my C two, uh, another war bond. So I saved some money on it already. And like I said, I melted my Raylan because I kind of looked at it. I'm like the Raylan. Although, watch it show up at Alien Week <laughs> next week. Yeah. Um, let's but, keep. Yeah, yeah, let's get out of here. Um, so the but Raylan. I, am, my, I don't I know. I don't know. Maybe. They put a no, lot of work. No, I think the, the Sentok Yai is coming. That's what I think is coming. I think some of the people that view videos are going to go with a what? <laughs> but yeah, like Sentok that's the shit that's been long, long in the tooth overdue. This is true, it, and it's, it's a an alien vessel. Yes, that's basically what it is. Open. And it's long overdue. What the heck? Why didn't it open? It's actually. Oh, oh there we there go. We go. Ooh, I forgot you can just exit the ship on the elevator. I never use this elevator. You don't? No. You always go out the ramps? Yeah, I just drop the ramp. See, when I'm doing trades, I, I don't like having my ramp open. True. But to quote Rick and Morty, they love the ramp. <laughs> now, this looks really, I mean, the size of this turret down here, whole, these are definitely size four. That's yeah. huge. And I mean, there's just so many. Um, oh. The analogy of it being a turtle is a great expression because it's armored on top, and then when it's all its weapon systems are pointed downwards, its, palms, its legs, its turrets, <laughs> yeah. it just spins, spins the wind, you know. I just uh, rented it. Okay, where are we? What the heck? Oh, we're in the back. That's a good yeah. point. I should rent this too. Who knows? Maybe I'll do a bombing run or something with it for fun. Good video, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just. The A2 is just... I, I think if you're really into this type of ship, you'll know you want this ship. There's no... Well, no, I, I agree. You like the boom. Um, yeah. And, of course, carrying the troops and the in, in the vehicles. I mean, basically, you, you... Does this have jump seats, right? Yeah, it has the jump seats, just like the M2, right? Mm -hmm. Or not? No. No, it doesn't. Well, it has the, the, the idea is that people sit on the turrets. Oh so well, yeah, that's spaces, true. But people can sit on the turrets. People can sit but at the kitchen table. <laughs> the way I look at it is, this is nice. I used to have this, the tank. I like the way they did this with the components, actually real components and everything. Yeah, you can get to them. I, I like that I... it's habitable. It's really bulky though. It's really bulky. Yeah, but that's that's all, all more than anything because of metrics. Yeah. So. And it's at a really high price point for what it is. I mean, it's... To oh, me, no. Don't even go down that route because we're talking about ground vehicles. Yeah. We could talk about every single ground vehicle in this game. That's, except for, that except for the $20... Um, I got the $5 coupon for the uh, the hover quad because I was a Nomad owner. So mm -hmm. I paid 20 for that So you know, in, in new money. that That's not too bad for that. But yeah, almost every ground. I mean, seriously, sixty-five bucks for half the cyclones. It's like ridiculous. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know what? You know what mine is now. I, I five bucks. It became a raft. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And I it's love like, the raft for this so. price point. Anything, anything, ninety dollars USD plus on vehicles to me is just too high. Um, this can become this can become ships unless you have like a really specific 
loadout need you for. Really yeah, want. if yeah. you're if you're part of a PMC and you want LTI and have your tank always, you know, whenever the server gets crashed or mm -hmm. or I mean uh, wiped. Yeah, I could see that. Because, I mean, okay. think about it. You got the Nova at 120 USD. You got the Ballista at 140 USD. They're, they're literally pricing most folks out of the game if you have a, a, a small fleet to begin with. But, yeah, like you said, we're not gonna, let's not go down the vehicle road too hot and really go after them. Do you want to go to the holograms first? or uh, Yeah, let's just holes? go down. Yeah, okay. we'll head down. Because I, I think we have, like, what is it, Misk today and who else? Um, tumbrel, Misk. tumbrel. It's that's all. It's tumbrel, misc, and crusader. Crusader. So I'm guessing a lot. Misc, of misc has a there. huge lineup, but when it comes to Invictus, it doesn't. Yep, I think that's probably why they sat. They sat down and put so many on the same days. Yeah. I yeah, I agree. Oh, they have another tumbrel down here. Tanks, tanks everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Now why don't they let us drive it through through the hallways here? <laughs> and then you got the oh you got some cyclones down here too. Oh, there is some cyclones. Okay. I I haven't been in MT. In fact, so, I haven't really seen one. Here's my beef with the MT. It invalidates every other crack crack except for racing or like super niche like rate uh, something. Well, the RN here, I use the RN in my package cuz it has the radar so, and stuff. But okay, the the TR. TR is useless. Because the MT exists. That gun is better on, the, on, well, the, on this. Well, it's a different gun, but they're both size one. So it doesn't validate the gun, but the missiles and the gun exactly. together, where you need this to have missiles and you need this to gun, this has both. But it doesn't necessarily invalidate it um, because it's cheaper, for one. Um, the other thing about this, there's two things I've noticed when I did it when I did a te ground test on this. And isn't this faster? It barely fits in the 400i, and then the 400i's landing gear was lowered slightly, which means this can no longer fit. But technically, these other vehicles may be able to fit because those missiles, the du the double missile rack on top, it does not fold in in any way. Well, uh, makes it. Too I tall. can say the regular cyclone and these fit. I don't think either of those weaponized gun ones would fit in the 400i well it um, used to just barely you could drive it yeah, from the front and now it, now you can't um, that it, was from before and i yes. have no problem with that because what's the 400i need something with <laughs> guns on it but and, but i get your point but see now if they made this cyclone slower than this one i could get that or what if they said you want missiles, you get this one, and maybe they up this to a size 2 so it's got serious Possible. firepower. You know, the other thing, your gunner's completely exposed on the sides on this one. One of the other oh, things yeah. I noticed is these missile racks, unless they, they like... They protect... Yeah. Yeah. Unless the bullet can penetrate and break one of these missiles, uh, when it hits the side of those big metal racks, uh, it doesn't hit your gunner. <laughs> they're, they're completely protected from the sides. So that's a big, big, big advantage. This this vehicle. Oh, so do I look badass, Red? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, your your glasses look like some futuristic hologram. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> giving me targeting information. <laughs> you know, I have to say, I was on the Connie's yesterday. It's like when they set up these ships, they need to turn the power on so the lights are on. There's yes. nothing worse than going and touring a ship when the lights are off. Seems like they would have figured that out by then. Okay, let's go to the hollows. Yep. I think we've we've we went back and did what we said we weren't going to do right. and bash the vehicle. The cyclones that are <laughs> cyclones are under 95, 90, whatever USD. They're not. It's the actually end of the world 65. To have one. Yeah, that's what to, I'm saying. Under I think 80 is the AA. That's the most expensive, and it's probably because okay, it has an EMP got? built in. It has a very it's short range yeah. EMP in it, which That's people forget about. Actually, when they first came out, I was with the uh, who our prime leader is right now. Um, he uh, he was driving that around, and I was in RC trying to stay away from him, and he kept EMPing me, which was kind of funny. <laughs> it also has countermeasures on it, which a lot of people don't don't realize. That's a good point. I did I forgot about that too. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, when you're in the ground convoy, having the a having the AA around, 
it's got smaller missiles, uh, but having an EMP might help you against ground, but it's not going to do anything for air because it's too short range. But having no AA, somebody locking on fire a missile, and all of a sudden it's like, wait, how do they have countermeasures? You know, as your missiles go I'm astray. Like, so. I like to think like CIG and future testing, like they go and they deploy that and go, oh yeah, it's got those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> So where's the, isn't there two top turrets, I thought, on this? I don't trust the turrets on these holograms. But yeah, the Odyssey should have yeah, two forward right. top turrets. Yeah, you're right. A lot of them don't. Is there one on the bottom? I don't where's know the... if there's one on the bottom. I know there's two top turrets. We did the video, I know. <laughs> this is supposed to, <laughs> yeah. This has a lot of damage. One of the things people keep saying to me is, oh, it's like, it's got the A2's turrets or something, or half the damage yeah. of an A2 with this and that. I'm like, that's fair, that's fair, but it ain't no it A2. just kind of butchered everything together, so. Yeah, that's kind of the... I feel like this is the civilianized Polaris in a weird way, like, because of that yeah. hanger. Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's a very fair assessment, I think. Yeah, and then they, they said, well, what do we what can we give it that's that's that makes it truly unique and it can make its own fuel. Uh huh. It's it's uh it's not specialized like the Carrick. I think we had this conversation. The Carrick oh, has yeah. the very protected, expanded uh, fuel tanks and everything. It's a military vessel, so it's generally assigned a mission to go somewhere, do its job, and get back. So it has that range. It knows how far it can go and get back. So it's not not really particularly, for example, it's it's supposed to be the best at stellar cartography and jump points and that type of deal. So it it would go, okay, you need to go to this system and map that system and then come back with the information. So, you know, you get down, you calculate everything. It's like, okay, well, we got to refuel at XYZ point and then we can go from there and get back, you know, safely and... You do that where the odyssey is more for the civilian explorers the type of people that here on earth are the ones that are going out in their ships you know trying to find the titanic and that type of stuff mm -hmm. you know where they want to be able to stay out as long as possible maximize you know their their ability to stay out and i think that that's what this is really good at it doesn't have a yeah. lot of the specialized gear so you have that more flexible ability where your specialization is like you said it's staying out there <laughs> yes and by the way i have a very very interesting theory about some of the ships they keep finding like the, like the titanic i think mm -hmm. well, we can talk offline about that but <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um anyway back off of like uh you know theory crafting land back to this game theory crafting um yeah. you know like the uh the way that this this ship is presented i think is fine i think people need to be careful about thinking it's a combat vessel and it's more <laughs> of just a it can defend for itself vessel buying itself time to get friends or uh get away etc et get et away yeah yeah it, it's a big creature and it's going to need a crew that's willing to stay out there a while with you or ai that is going to be suitable enough to at least work the turrets have an engineering ai right Mm -hmm. limited crew limited crew i think would be necessary to run this ship i do like the communal crew area by the way the bridge where it kind of collapses all the operations into the bridge it's kind of like Absolutely. star trek -y. i agree especially newer star trek -y. i mean yeah, they're all yeah. similar but i mean <laughs> the newer the some of the newer bridges are set up more like this um where you have more stations wrapped around that are centralized instead of around the outside they're more part of the circle instead of outside the circle is is what i'm driving at yeah and, oh i need to get a picture of the uh miss sign i'm trying to get a me, picture of each of these let me know Except, if you're man, your what's shot with the I'll, darkness I'll... no i'm over here but you can't see the dang see the lighting's messed up that that's sucks. true you want to hear something else messed up i'm in the all section of the pledge shop i cannot find the odyssey it's on my other really? screen. I have the pledge shop open, unless I'm completely missing it. I also searched for ODY, and it's not here. And OD, and it did not come up. 
So I think I have to go through the main website in order to find it. Like go to hmm. Misc Day on the RSI website. What's its price? Is it still the same? That's why I'm. So, that's you why haven't I, found it yet. <laughs> that's why I'm, <laughs> trying, I'm trying so, to stay ahead of these, but uh, that's a little easier said than done. I only have the single screen, so I will try to find it's, it too. You know, it's entirely possible they don't have it for sale. Why don't you just search Odyssey? They don't have it for sale. <laughs> they put it in oh. the holograms, and they don't have it for sale. That's true. I was going to say, oh, well, it's an explorer. It's not a military ship. And then here you and I are talking, and it's down here. You're absolutely right. It's like, why is it here? Now, this is something I'm waiting for. Well, not this one. Which one I is your the, favorite? The CV is the one, because this remember, I like TR, to do courier right? missions. Yeah, because that's the only military one they have. Yeah. But... Yeah, the CV with the, the with the, with the uh, be able to carry three boxes, which is what courier heck, missions yeah. are. Basically, you know, you fly in your Crusader, and your partner jumps out the uh, opening ramp on your Mercury <laughs> to, to deliver the boxes. Yeah, m motorcycles do shocking carry a, a shocking amount of stuff. People really underestimate them, and I think in this game, motorcycles are very practical. Uh, I don't think the hover things are for everybody, and also. This will have a lower uh, EM and IR signature than the hover yeah. bikes will. Yeah. Although they've lowered all vehicles EM True. properly, which I think is is what will shift as as the game grows. That people because one of the units in my organization is Calvary, and they specialize in uh, bikes, uh, particularly grab bikes. But also, when these come out, they will. And that's really that's, cool. That's their specialty. Uh, they're part of our uh, reconnaissance, uh, you know, deep, deep recon or flanking attacks, you know, using grab bikes and stuff. Um, the Outriders are basically uh, combat recon scouts, so scout sniper types. Um, when they're on the ground and when they're in the sky, they pair Terrapins with Eclipses. So they go scout out, and if they need backup, the eclipses are hidden in the black. To That's really slick. Basically, a, a space sniper. It, it's they're snipers on the ground or in space. So that's kind of their little unit mixture. And the first one are, uh, if the scout snipers are the hawk version, the dove version is, uh, uh, what is it? Geospatial reconnaissance pioneers. They're basically the peaceful mappers, explorers that are the ones that go out to the unknown areas and focus on, uh, you know, survival, knowing environments, you know, caves, yeah. all that type of stuff. And or, you know, being in Terrapins and 315s and exploring in space. So, so. like for all these crews, well, the first one and the third one, these would be yeah. useful. <laughs> or, yes. Yeah. So. I, I when the I'm really looking forward to these, but I know that Paul, um, what's Paul's last time? I'm blanking on it. Paul said that you know when these were coming out, he's like it's going to require an entire new mechanic. We don't have anything with two wheels, you know, mm -hmm. that's on the ground. So that's part of the delay. Because what's the story of Star Citizen? But yeah, priorities. <laughs> it's like yeah. you know they they can't work on every mechanic at the same time. So and this. These are probably not in Squadron 42, so no need to make them. So. The elephant in the room, too, is that this on an outpost would be heavenly. But until yeah. outposts come out, it's like, how often are people going to yeah, use it them? It is heck of dark. I can barely see you. It's funny. Your wow. glasses are helping. but uh, Oh, are they? <laughs> they're glowing in the dark. They glow in the dark? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm okay. going to go up the left staircase, I guess. Hey, yep. there's... What are these things on the wall? Oh, these are from yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, they're cool. They're, they've been up here. Yeah, they're steadily up here. Also, look at this cluster F on on the wall yeah, here. I know. What is even like? I mean, think of like the Idris because it has to spin the entire ship to fire that size ten. So what yeah. is it even firing at? It doesn't it doesn't even know. Just, just shoot, just shoot. There's everything yeah. out there. <laughs> we'll scare everybody. <laughs> uh, so. You know how the hit scan weapons disappeared? Yeah. From the uh, defender, they will be back. I think that's that's nice because the defender needs something. Really no, 
for it. Those might not ever come back, but there will be one hit scan weapon that will come back, and it's on the Idris K, the the laser beam hard point. Really? Yeah. Okay. Didn't you? You don't remember that? No, I remember the laser beam. I didn't know it was a hit scan weapon. Well, yeah, it's a it's a beam laser, so it's gonna be. You know. <laughs> I can grab a, grab a to be on. honest, that's more exciting than the railgun to me to have you know just oh. a beam laser. And, and the, it, it's crazy, dude. You don't even need the uh, extra power plant, whereas the the railgun requires an extra power plant to run it. Yeah, I know. The the they're gonna have to balance that. And my my thought is are, like, are you dying gonna, of thirst? No, I'm at eighty six percent, but I didn't want to end up at like like zero percent like last time. Yeah, I'm at eighty eight, but I'm carrying stuff on me in my pockets so yeah pockets it, is okay mercury star runner oh they have two star runners where'd you end up which hall inferno hole? that's what i'm trying zh3 is that the one right next to us i think yeah i think so oh there you are yeah it's right here so yeah the laser they're gonna have to balance that my guess is that the idris k will have to power down its shield what one of its shield faces or something like that where it's overloaded its power plant and so they can more likely it, so it will it will just you'll have to put all power to weapons that's my guess so your shields won't regenerate your thrusters that's that's the easiest way with the current mechanic is just say in order to fire your your final mount you have to throw all power to your weapons and but, then that way you automatically get disadvantaged so but to aim you need those auxiliary thrusters running the whole ship has to rotate to aim. Oh, we, well, you would just not have boost. They would still work. Yeah. You oh, know, that's it's just like... What? The style is so clean and so direct on the um, on the Crusader ships that yeah. I literally ran... I was about to run up to this Ion thinking it was just another Mercury. But like, force yeah. perspective plus yes. playing games with my head. I agree. I totally missed the size 7 laser gun on the front. <laughs> Energy weapon, I should say. Oh, I open. Yeah. So it has a weapon locker back here. Does it have equipment store? Oh, storage right here. That's kind of cool how they put it back here. It's like that on the uh, the three twenty five A and well, the three the, the three hundred series in a nutshell. Except for the three fifty R, I don't think has it. They have like a I drop think... down storage at the back of the ship. Right oh, there. for the cargo, yeah. But I mean, this is just personal stuff. You know, this yeah. is in the 300 series. You have this inside. Oh, unless you get the racer, <laughs> then, then you, you don't get nothing. The 350R is a weird bird. Uh, I yeah, love it, I but agree. I hate like it's it's a weird bird. I love the 325A. That's like the sweet spot to me in the 300 series. Like you still keep the food and the drink and everything, and a full right. bathroom and the bed all in the same ship. And it's oh my goodness is. It, I can really do well in a 325A. I've spent enough time sure. in it. You can really churn out some energy with that. Some great fighting. I, I don't do a lot of fighting, so I ended up um, having the 315P is the one I had. That's a great a chip, time. too. Yeah, I traded it in, though. Um, it needs the tractor beam. To really or the Nomad. Good call, honestly, especially without the tractor beam. It really needs it when it gets there. So here's the you smugglers hold. <laughs> yeah. On um on, on on divisions, we sometimes use this as like a set, like to get set pieces and also Yes, that would make uh, sense. This is how I get out actually. Oh yeah, you go you go through all these? Well I when I come out of, when I come out I go into habitation and drop down here and then it's just a straight walk to the back instead of cutting through everywhere else. Well the other less, Yeah. Less doors. You can get camera shots in here too. Like you can open these get these these doors on the on it when it, when they do stay open, um, you can like hit F four and, and bring it up. You know, bring the camera up out of the ground and get a shot. Oh yeah, okay. It's it's just it's a it's a very fun ship for machinima. Um, it, yeah. As an actual practical ship, I it, it's 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 a little much, but it is a great ship. I think. It, it, there is some valid criticism about how this ship is a little expensive and fattened up. Like, like it was meant to be like a hardcore, slimline data runner ship. 
And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, we got to fit an Ursa rover in it. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> well, it didn't have to. They expanded it, and I'm actually grateful for that. I think it was a great idea. Hey, um, yeah. Be, because, in, because they did that, it also carries a greater amount of cargo, which to me is, is important. And the thing that you're paying for most in this ship was data. Because if you think of the where the data is... Yep. You think of it like this hold that we're standing right here. So now it's these this this uh, row of servers basically. Yes. Here. So this is like cargo space. So what you'll do is you'll have a cart, and when you come here, just like you see on the Herald, you'll be pulling out these sections right here. These are storage devices. So you pull them out, stack them on your cart, and then you'll come out here ah. you'll push the cart on here lower it down that's why the cart's here and then you'll roll it out and transfer it to whoever's you know mine it which is why i think you don't see data running until we get physicalized cargo because that's when these will all pop out fair enough and i mean for 260 this is a great price point still for this type of ship it's just not a good price point for the ship as it is now. Correct. The future. And don't forget, you have that whole scanning room right there. Yep. Which, once again, it is a little bulky, but... And this is kind of like... No. Right now, this is wasted space. No. But in the future, this will not yeah. be... You know, a scanning room is stronger than a scanning station. Yep. So, a Connie Aquila, for example, that has a scanning station that you stand at or sit at or whatever it was... Um, is not going to be as pronounced uh, capabilities as this, an entire exactly. room devoted to scanning. This or a Terrapin or, yeah, whatever. I really think um, this area right here, I just turned on the lights. What the heck? I guess the ship's not powered up. Or... The ship's buggy. At there best. we go. This, <clears throat> I think here you can put armor lockers here. Because it, 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 it needs armor lockers on here. And, it's wasted and, uh, space. It, so. If there's one complaint aside from like the weird little tubes underneath that like they're great for Mishinima, but not really great for how fat the ship is. Um, it's that Well, if you there. can toss boxes down there and they can't be scanned, that would be a good thing. That That's a fair point. And the Taurus has that same situation. How good yeah. is that? scanning protection going to be in that back storage area for the 6SCU back there. That's that's a great point. That could change everything. And really, it should. But, like, I could also see, like, at MSR, this rec, they nailed the rec room in the MSR. Yeah, I like, agree. Like, for somebody, like, when persistent hangers come out, I could definitely see guys coming and hanging out in here waiting for their friends and stuff. You've got the drinks, you've got the food, you've got prep. Well, you've when got... you're in quantum, too, if you're doing a long quantum jump, yeah, you know, a, a lot of people, uh, you know, when you look at it, um, because number one, a lot of people buy the Mercury, and they don't look into it because the Mercury has light armor; it has racing ship armor, so it's not something that's taken a hit. Plus, you have the medium shields; you don't have a large mm -hmm. shield like some in this category because it was supposed to be medium. You've already mentioned it got thick <laughs> and yeah. and whatnot, but it is you know a, a mercury it's supposed to be fast and star runner is the the chassis really mercury is the model number so it's kind of how they you you have the the aries starfighter ion so starfighter is like the chassis aries is the class where it's a fighter so it kind of leaves open that they can take the same chassis very similar to the titan chassis and star uh, bomber that the it. spartan and stuff is but yeah exactly but i'm wondering if the star bomber might be an alien ship we'll see next week or week and a half yeah. from now which one is um, it that opens this chest set is it the rook uh it's the queen That's you have to queen. take the queen and put it up there the white queen i always forget that i think that's the queen We'll find out real quick. Is it not letting you put it? It's
it's all it's buggy at best. It's fighting me. <laughs> I think what's because of the rental situation. There's like yeah, that that's big probably and, true. Collider. This ship doesn't belong to you, so it's fighting you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't get it up there. I'm just gonna yeah. put it back on the board, one of these spots. But it, it really is kind of cool that you can. Really you can sucks when you can't get it up. I get there. God, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> you said it. Not so the, the Habs are good. Uh, this ship is a great. Once again, future price pointer. I, I'm really yeah. interested in it. I think that the MSR is a solid ship. Has amazing paints. We'll certainly get more. I'm sure of it. You have noticed, of course, the fast changes to ship naming that they've been doing lately, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is just the Mercury and they've been getting rid of manufacturer names from actual ship titles now. So I, I noticed that it's weird they put two Mercury's here. Yeah, especially because like, I guess they wanted to fill the hall, but yeah. honestly, this is kind of it just feels like I'm loading this in for no good reason. But but what if what if the Star Bomber is a converted Star Runner? Could so be. next year you might see that one of these is the Star Bomber. I hope they do. I hope they do. I could definitely see a chassis that's the Star Bomber. And then you have the Inferno here, which is the Ion's um, evil twin, I guess you could say. The ballistic Dark version. twin, yeah. Yep, that's a size sure. seven. Size 7. It, um, the black and red kind of gives it... Well, that there. also brings up an interesting no, no. strategy um, when it comes to these ships. Can using open paints the, on the uh, combat vessels that are like that may be a good idea, especially if somebody doesn't get a good scan on you immediately. They can't rapidly identify you. Right. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's a small advantage, but paints do help in some ways. I can't maybe. open up anything because this is rentable. It's just... I, I, I can't get a precise enough... <laughs> Bot to try to open up all this stuff. You want to give it the F8 treatment? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm the type that when when I got in the Scorpion that I bought temporarily, um, I I used the open close all button that I have to open everything all at once before I got out. Nice. Instead of watching all the videos of people stumbling around, oh, where's this button for this? Where's this? It's like just open it all up and then you can close it as you you know go to it and then you know by the end of the video you, everything should be put away hold still and say cheats this is quite a ship i'll tell you the inferno series is a uh, is a creature oh, sorry the aries series including the Inferno, is a quite yep. a creature set. And um, I, I, I don't know. I've seen at least two people on di random discords chatting about how they're getting rid of their ions, which kind of shocks me because the ion, <laughs> it's between the banners, I can't see it from here, um, <laughs> is um, it's kind of in a weird place. Like, I get it. The Inferno right now, you can see just raw damage potential. But the ion is going to be a great fleet fight ship. Like, taking out shields of, like, large class and, and even cap ships and stuff is really going to be a valuable tool. Once, once they get the the um, the ranges and stuff, you know, once we get the servers back and Yogi Clack can can start experimenting and, and shifting ranges up once more. Because right now our servers are too strained to have anything with extraordinary range. You know, because the, the servers can't keep track of all that, but... Once we get the uh, replication layer and the persistent working, it will take the, all that load off the existing servers yeah, of everything true. it has to. So I'm hoping that that will, because Yogi did mention that the end of this year, this was early spring um, or late winter, depending on how you, you know, I think it was February ish, roughly. Yeah. He was talking about that late this, later this year. You know, there's going to be, you know, a pretty major uh, weapon refactor, or at least rebalance, I should mm -hmm. say. So I'm just, my speculation, again, speculation, my guess is we might, uh, um, and this is linked to the recent uh, information and mechanics to it, 
that they were trying to finish up on and work. Yeah. There's nothing that's released here. I'm thinking it could be something because they've also worked on mines. It could be the Nautilus, for example, with all the mining mechanisms. Um, I don't think we'll get the drones or anything, but I mean, I could see it releasing. We've got bombs, so I could see mines coming, number one. So that mechanism. It mm -hmm. also has size seven dual turret on the front. So it's basically two of these. Like on literally the front. these are the bespoke size sevens, whereas we'll exactly. the first real size sevens. So that's my thinking. When he was talking about, you know, he, he and if you also remember John Crew had mentioned uh, before, remember when he, he made that joke, what was the word he used? Uh, apocalyptic. Mm -hmm. And he actually had posted a comment saying um, that the three, was it 314? Three, three, when we did that change? 315 maybe. It was 315, yeah. He kept saying, I he said that's, saying it, he's, but yeah, he wasn't. Yes, but he said that's not the apocalyptic change I was talking about. That's why I think this fall, especially with persistence and stuff coming in, we might be getting, you know, at least some ships getting components. We might be getting, you know, more size seven weapons. And so if you have another large ship with a size seven, you're going to really need to balance weapons and range and stuff in. So that's why I think something's coming this fall at IAE or SITCON that's going to shift the dynamics of combat. And so that's when... I, I they're going to do something and so it's either mines it's either uh, more size seven weapons you know something that's going to cause a balance i think you're right and my first joke is going to be so that's why yoki's going to nerf the scorp and the hurricane just to piss people <laughs> off but no like yeah. like for real though uh citizen con got canceled this year they said there's going to be no in-person citizen con and well, yeah but it's not canceled but yeah there's no uh what do you well, uh, yeah, the physical sitcom got canceled, so we'll do yeah. digital again. Which but there won't be any keynote less... or any gameplay loop. It's all going to be panels, basically. Right, panels. And I think it's going to be reactionary to IAE, building up hype for IAE. I feel like IAE would be the time to release major changes, get people yeah. excited about them, get people picking things up. A um, sitcom, do you think they'll blend it together or they'll still do sitcom in October? That's a good question. Because I'm, sure. I'm thinking sitcom is w because that's our birthday, right? Sitcom is uh, of the start on, where IAE is an in game let's celebration. Keep, let's keep moving yeah. over to the other Zenith Hall. But yeah, I, I think you're right. Uh, they will do something for sitcom, but it won't be anywhere near as big. Um, in the I think past, it will be the announcement. That's when they're going to drop 318. Yes. So, that, that's what I think. But I, that's going to be the big thing. Right. I don't think Citizen Con is going to be like the big thing, though. I think it's going to be more of just... Look at the live stars, star, inside Star Citizens and stuff like that. Sorry, Star Citizen Live and inside Star yeah. Citizen video productions. I feel like it's just going to be a pile of those and that's it. Like, they, they don't... Yeah. They, they should not be focusing all their efforts across every studio for like two to three months on making an amazing citizen con at this stage right now we yeah, need more and all that's hands. exactly what they said okay yeah. let's check out the map so we know where we're going because i think it's only misc the probably starfarer and the tana and oh you already looked well no i'm just the other hall i think is zenith hall four we already went left. downstairs yeah that's all we have left is uh zh4 mm -hmm. which is this way okay cool i even like that they thought to use the halls that are near the front i mean that's just a nice yes touch. that's funny that was my thought exactly i was just thinking that so it just that's the third scam call i've got while i've been on with you <laughs> it's like geez oh i'm actually hungry now officially 96 percent. 96 percent. i got 92 percent on food 98 percent on drink yeah, you drink. I'm at 74, yeah. so I might stop. And mm -hmm. now I have here's a here's a thing right now for all you people out there that catch this in time. If you buy a Vulcan at the $200 price point, you get a regular Starfare, not the Gemini here, but a regular Starfare, which is worth 300 until the Vulcan comes out. So the loaner, <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good deal. $100 bonus basically. So, uh, and 
the Vulcan you can only buy at certain times. Okay, that's, now that's you a see lot this like the right? tally base, for example. It's the same yeah. same thing I pitched for that. The tally base is one fifty. Well, there's a, there's an the error lately. Bomber. The tally base gives you two tallies for the price of one. That's fantastic. Right now, this right here is a mini redeemer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a well. That's a good way to put it. And because I somebody was like, you know, get the tan. I'm like, no, I have a redeemer, and this has one SU cargo. I get two on the redeemer. <laughs> This has 16 size 2 missiles. Well, I have 16 size 2 missiles, too. And it's like, I can have somebody fire the, the wing turrets. I'm like, yeah, well, I got two turrets. But, yeah, I do need two people, Two people though. If you can but get past this thing spinning and everything, that's, the, I think, the big thing people have with the Reliance. is like, it, it's a, it's an awkward ship to fly until you get used to it. But if you can get past I'd love, that, it's great. I'd love the thing. Especially now that you can fly it in, you know, the horizontal mode in atmosphere because right. it has so much more and stuff you got the two bunks you got the you got the the hygiene facilities you've got all access to mostly access to the components inside yeah the the main thing you have to do is be in a seat or be back here when this thing starts spinning that's 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 an important factor right because this entire cockpit just starts spinning but and you gotta admit it, it's got the best view of oh, um, yeah. this ship with Prospector I, I, I and the best view of any ship practically. You know, it's one of the top dogs. I don't have uh, this one. I do have the Mako news van, a.k.a. the news van. Uh, the yellow I had, one. As a, as a, uh, a explorer type, I had the Sin for a long time, but I... Interesting you say that. If we go back outside, head back out there, so this is where like the Mako usually has its uh its little communications area and its data. Whereas this yeah, has the I've, weapon I've lockers, the, the lockers. Yeah. Well, the thing about the Sen and the Mako is they have these utility slots on the ends here. So instead of weapons, on the tail on on the on the, on the tips of the wings, there's two utility slots. Camera, so, telescope, sensor yes. thing. Yes. Yeah. So each one gets one. But and I think it's on the other end technically. Yeah, it's but on the right. Yeah. I've always wanted to find out if I could take a Sens module and put it on the right wing, uh, the left wing lit, and then on the right wing lit uh, utility mount, you would just so, leave the regular camera and see if they could both function on there. <laughs> well, to be honest, it's just a camera anyway when you take over. So I'd assume if it'd be like if you had a turret on one and not the other, and then you put two, you would just control both but yeah it, it's an interesting thing I, I would maybe try that experiment the interesting thing about the tana here to me and they define it as a militia ship as opposed to a fighter and that's how you can justify uh, I'm, I'm talking about you know the old the old sheriff and his bumbling deputy right in yeah. here two people that you have the bunks you have the racks you have the armor suits uh you have the the storage to take from the people you arrest right you know and mm -hmm. you confiscate stuff so you have the su capacity to have a crate there you know for that purpose that's kind of i see this as you know your po police patrol ship with two people you know cruising through you know say the crusader system so you're not jumping super far so you're mostly just going checking on outposts you know how you doing martha you know <laughs> how's things that you're out outpost you know that type of deal this that's what i think this ship is ideal for yes you know because it has everything for you to you know keep moving and it's like you know martha we're having a problem with our thruster can we just park and stay overnight here and johnny you know deputy johnny will work on it you know in the morning you know type especially with these rolling you the, the vtol engines when you're in landing mode you have it is wide but you could turn this sideways and then attempt to land it in most, most places this thing. like you said it takes a while to get used to it but once you yeah. kind of niggle it and especially as more and more switches go online uh, like with the Hull A and the Scorpius, these new mechanics and, and new hotkeys, they'll be able to separate landing gear, VTOL, and transformation, um, you know, uh, animations yeah. uh, to give you greater control of the state of your vehicle. You know, whereas yeah. before we used to have, oh, you want the landing gear down? Well, then you're in this mode and your VTOLs, you know, everything's either on or off. And so now you'll be able to 
control where everything sits. Yes, and they've they've hardened up these wings quite a bit in the past. There oh, was a problem <laughs> where, like, if you had a wing blown off, half your DPS was gone, and it yeah. really it made a weird situation to try to land, etc. Because like everything is tied to these wings, except for the engines, and then. Um, Basically, from what I'm hearing, what I've heard from multiple people now is they've reinforced the heck out of these uh, mounting points where the wings go on. So it's That's, less... Uh, no. I mean, it's got such a wide dance. Yeah. Um, so really now you're making up. me want to... Uh, I'm thinking I might melt my Scorpius to grab... I know people are out there. Yeah, it, it's not a bad <laughs> like, price point. It, it, no, honestly, this is more of a CCU, a vehicle to this thing price point. Oh, I mean, yeah, I would, I would buy buy a sixty five dollar LTI. Uh, actually, buy the upcoming Drake <laughs> Mule. Yeah, grade it if you want. Okay, so, let's uh, check my favorite ships: the Freelancer Miss. Okay, Miss Nest. Yep. That's fine. We'll, so we'll hit big boy after. Yeah, the, the the miss is a weird creature to me. It it, 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 I love it. I love everything about it, and then at the same time, it just feels so dated. It really needs another pass. But oh well, that's nice. the whole freelancer line. Now these, I love this. They're There's pods. Two, size two, or size three missiles in each of these pods, and I actually got in a long combat. Uh, and I remember coming back here, and I had one pod, the top pod here. And the rest of the ship was empty. <laughs> These pods were gone. And so it was the weirdest thing, you know, and I'm like, you know, I wish I could have been back here while I was fighting, you know, to see these all moving up the conveyor and, and stuff. That would have been very yeah. cool. It's, it's, it's neat that it works. Now I have the Freelancer Miss and the Freelancer Dur. I have both of them. I've had the Dur since I started playing the game. It was my first ship. Yeah. I couldn't fly it, of course. It was the base that we got as a loner, but um they're they're identical there is a total of 36 scu um 24 back here yeah and 12 in here because the max uh, is the only one with like that wider back to it correct kind of fills out and, different engines yeah. and so these two are are identical it's this room we're standing in that's different this has missiles the other one has refinery equipment for fuel refining the dur that is mm -hmm. they both have the uh, bulbous uh, sensors on the nose. Um, this, I have a feeling, and the Dur like might be more for scanning for not combat, whereas the Mist might be scanning ships because yeah. they, they have the bulbous different... sensors. Yeah. But yeah, there are different purposes exactly. Um, this is my theory, and I'm kind of curious. You you just got done talking about what I've talked about. This obviously needs an update. Now the Cutlass has been getting a gold pass update, but the but the Cutlass Black is in Squadron 42, so it's that's why it's getting its up well, to uh, all the freelancers. But what I'm saying is this room here, I think, is the one that's going to change. Now, if you look up, there's an airlock. Which I'll open. So this is your airlock room. This room for four crew, I think you're going to lose some or maybe all of the SCU capacity in here to install armor suits. Maybe only one side and i think there'll be a, a weapon rack installed where this monitor is at least that's what i would do yeah because you need to have it and you have four crew you need a place to put armored suits and you know it would make sense if you're going to eva or whatever and you have a docking ring that you would put it in here and the armor suits width wise, I think they're two that you can fit in one SCU space. I'd have to go on my raft to see their width, but I, th mm -hmm. I, I think you'll lose and it stacks up three here. So you would technically lose six SCU just to get those here. So you'd still have a little bit of storage. And here's the other thing. Tell me, how do you get an SCU box in here? You don't. Exactly. <laughs> so. This, this never made much sense to have an SCU box. Wow, I kind of like the lighting effect from above us shining down. The yeah, that's pretty cool. Circle. This needs um, a ladder, I mean, to get really in and out of that airlock anyway. It's, it will, it's it will drop down. Whenever you have a ring, when, when you have the thing extend, 
and connect. I assume that it will do that. But I think that's the same reason you don't have them on the new retaliator. They got rid of the top and the bottom. They got rid of one mm -hmm. elevator on the port side to create a docking. And make uh, a wider elevator. And a wider elevator on the other side because you took away the other one. Yeah, exactly. And that poor ship, the retaliator, they had to widen the hallways, which meant they had to widen the doors. And there wasn't a ton of space, you know, in the ship because it was made so long ago. John Crew was just saying, you know, we can only do so much. And it's also the same reason that they can't put a large shield in it. There's there's no room to put large shields on it. But I'm hoping that what they do instead is kind of retrofit, you know, the old bird itself and maybe put four medium shields on it, you know, or mm -hmm. something like that. You know, so it it's basically just duped up. I love the yellow aspect. If you sit down, all the orange to tell you that this ship is not powered on right now. But if you sit down, it should turn it all the if you if it will it let you power this on? Maybe probably Let's not. Let's take a look. Obviously, the HUD came up like it should. It registers that somebody's sitting here. Uh -huh. Let's see. I'm going through all the little switches. There's a few that are lighting up, but they're not giving me options to do something. Yeah, I figure. But all the lights are orange when you're in the power down state. Because I've been taking both my Dur and my Mist out to to do various things. Um, I, I take it out every now and again. As much as I love these ships, you mentioned the exact reason why I don't take it out as off as as often, and that's because they're they're getting dated. They you know, really they're, are, yeah. they're just not as fun to fly as my 400i and, and ships of that and it's it's and not it, the look it's it's really just the no, even the practical no. usage and they just it's don't just, work with the way the game's set up i oh, mean but yeah they are nice and they will be properly set up eventually these yeah. mali like like you know this ship in my ass. every single ship and See, it will and be it has so things, uh, on black it has yeah. a toilet and shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have the Drake bucket effect that you're going to yeah. need to have. Uh, you know, for the price po for the 175 price point, it's a little high, but it is an incredible ship. It has a lot going for it. The rear the rear turret here may not work. Who knows? But um, eventually, it will get golden past. Yeah, there's a rear turret in your radar, right? So yeah. yeah, So it has a little bit going for it. I think for a two up configuration, that's not a bad ship. You know, uh, even for a single player, just chucking missiles in a group, in a group, uh, that's not a bad ship. Um, now we come to the big boy who actually has a purpose. Finally. Yes, but they never really revamped the whole wall of, of hallways, the tangled hallways. Oh, yeah, I know, but they said they wouldn't do that until they got refueling in. So yeah. supposedly they're going to be getting going on that because this is yeah. the first person shooter ship you know so, somewhere large we, didn't, we never found it but supposedly razor rate the razor ex is also here today for 155 on the on the, on the, on the yeah. website at least and then the star the starfare gemini is at 340 price point still and this mm -hmm. is an amazing ship I'm dreading when it goes to 350 because it will break a lot of CCU chains for new folks. Um, this is the ship, you know, the $10 Endeavor upgrade <laughs> ship. You think and it's going to go up? I think they will when it finally is usable, properly usable. Whoa, look at oh, this. Good. Don't go in there. Yeah, I'm not. I'm always missing. Oh, well, that, that makes it interesting. It's a very short tour. Well, <laughs> we can go up this way, I think. It's well, there. we can go out, but I mean, we can't. There's yeah, we no can't way go upstairs. Up. Yeah, we can't. I guess it's they're dangerous. telling you to see it, rent it. <laughs> yeah, For free. Now, one of the things that the hidden bonuses of these older ships is, like, take a look at all these jump seats in the back. Yep. I mean, that's an nowadays, that's in a whole ship, just to have these jump seats and to have all this vehicle ramp spaced. Because it's a vehicle ramp, an actual ramp. It's or cargo. Difference. Yes, Depends or uh, I've seen people fit Dry cargo. Uh, 100 eyes, uh, your, your, your go-to. Um, people fit 100 eye in here. 
Oh, wow. I've seen that, which is pretty crazy to see. I've seen an M50 in here before. An M50 would be pretty cool in here. Actually practical, possibly, too. But the rate fits. It's a very small, thin ship. I, I can't remember. They might have had to break the wings off the M50 to get it in here. But... Well, that's the way that it is for the 300s on that one, the, um, the Hercules series. When you open it yeah. up, you can fit it in. I think it's the back, I think it was. But you had to bust up both the wings <laughs> up. Kind of makes it impractical. Yep. <laughs> We've got your stuff to pyro. The downside is uh, you're going to have to repair the entire ship. Wait, what? I actually did mess with the Starfare when I was out. And I, I love that you can get different tanks. You know, install different tanks and whatnot on the outside. Because you can tell these are have great detail. The tanks. Yeah, like, the armor Better tanks. than the rest of the ship. And eventually, if they stick to what they said a while ago, they're going to allow um, dry goods as well. So, like, the idea is that these containers can be replaced with ref from refueling to dry goods. But that may have changed yet again. I don't know. Well, um, I did read it, um, the, the same thing. And one of the driving points was you can do it, but it's not efficient for this because all the piping and everything that they set up to go to each of these pod places is kind of wasted if you hook it up for dry goods only. Yeah. Uh, which I kind of understood the point, but sometimes maybe you don't need the wet goods, you know, fuel, milk, you know. What's the name of the, the cow? Are you, don't even risk it. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. It is the Just final rent. ship, but... You, you'll have to... I have plenty of these things. That's the funny part. I don't even need yeah. to rent it. Oh, that's right. You did say that, huh? This is my go-to ship to CCU to upper ships. And um, I had an epiphany, I think, a year ago going, what there if they is. increase the price? Or what if they pull it, like, make it harder to get? Like, made, if they make it rare or something goofy? Right. Like mm -hmm. a Phoenix style. Oh, now it's limited. It's limited. You can only buy one per event and uh, no CCUs and no this, no that. So... Um. The EX is the Stealthy Razor, and that's why we missed it. It's right there. It's been looking <laughs> at it. It's so small and stealthy, we didn't even know. Just yeah, these, these razors are kind of interesting to me. They're very expensive, what they are. But uh, Crow's Customs, I think, has a, an upgraded engine for these things, was it? I There's think the LX it. down there, yeah. The The neat thing about these is that the, the skin is specially made to uh, absorb hydrogen, which most racers don't always have so yeah and I mean, is... look at that look at look at the front of this it looks like a formula one car and the fiber the carbon fiber mm -hmm. of all this I, I, the I'm detail the carbon fiber is just beautiful i had this for a while have you ever and... seen the uh the, the carbon fiber weave in the 300 series when you, when you customize them it's yellow yeah. and black it looks good too it's like a combination of I guess Kevlar and carbon fiber, I guess. That Interesting. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Well, this yeah. has been fun, Red, but I do need to get off and take care of a few things. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks again for coming out, Mason. I appreciate it. And um, I'm, I usually, I did a plug the last time for Vanguard, but <laughs> is there anything specific you wanted to, put together like an event coming up or recruitment drive or anything you wanted to mention uh nothing offhand although uh this saturday we are going to hunting we're <laughs> gonna try to take down a tiger as in a bingle wow so uh that's that's we're typically a lawful organization but it's a challenge that uh you know, some of our uh, more aggressive members are willing to to take uh, in the form of experimentation. You know, it's a game we try to play. You know, above board, but you know, how often is a bangle in the in the force? So they're just going to try out tactics. You know, for the future, basically. Gotcha. So that it's going to be one of the, the pretty exciting things that uh, we're going to do. And um, this uh, September. Uh, will be our four-year anniversary, actually, for the organization. So um, it's uh, pretty exciting to see the growth that, that we've done. And, you know, we've had changes. We have a different leaders. And, uh, 
we've had people you know leave uh you know for various reasons because you know it's real life four years especially two of those years being related to the pandemic <laughs> yeah um you know sometimes people's lives get dis dis disrupted yeah, yeah. So. so yeah so your website vgnd.net if i remember right correct vgnd.net check them out and uh I, I think you guys welcome everybody but hardcore pirates i as i if i yeah marauders and, and pirates we're we're very anti uh, uh basically anything that uh you know harms innocence or does indiscriminate destruction yeah we're, we're not in into that uh type of gameplay but we do respect it as a choice of individuals uh within the verse and that's what star citizens about is choice yeah, very true. And I mean, I've seen how honorable your crew is. I've been out to a few of your events, hung out with you many times. And uh, I got to tell you, it's it's great to see such a large organization growing. I, one of these days, I got to I got to swing out to one of your things again because it's you guys have grown so much and just heck, even just the past year plus, right? I mean, we're it's six hundred members, and yeah, we're we we've actually there's a, a content creator out there that we've. And I'm not going to mention it specifically because I, <laughs> but we've had an influx of members due to, I guess, some kind of internal strife or whatever going on. So they were trying to find a more drama free organization. And drama free is one of our top prime directives in our org. So, nice. as well as real life first. So, uh, if you're looking for an organization that respects and it's a casual org, we do have some uh, special teams that are very, you know, hardcore, especially, you know, the security first person shooter types and and that type. So we do have some crews that if you like that type of stuff, you know, you can join us and go there. But as a rule, our organization is casual, real life first. You know, we understand that, you know, we're not the type that you have to make a commitment to be on 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time three times a week, you know. No, type deal no red letter Some or ctas like that, or anything. as long as you know going in that that's the scenario then you know go for it but not everybody wants that type of situation so um you know we're, we're looking for individuals that want to come in we are a self-sustaining exploration uh organization so that's our key thing our our mission that we are deeming ourselves is to go out to the borders of UE space, create a bubble of order, uh, you know, to kind of secure the area and then explore beyond the borders and see what we can find. And uh, who knows, maybe uh, if we can find the right route and the right plan, we'll take the Vanguard system back. Keep chasing that horizon, brother. And I wish you the best with You've it. Got it. All right. Well, take care and you have a great one. You as well, Mason.